Hello and welcome to the T-Force LCS Rundown. Mott Ganorum, your host here to remind you that if you want to support the Trinity Force Podcast Network, you can do so over at patreon.com slash T-Force Network. What is Patreon, you might ask? Well, it's your way to support the network's growth through lovely, lovely fiscal donations. Donations start at just $1 per month, and every dime of what you invest in us, we put right back into you. The money we raise goes to help support our web servers, to help generate new content like the LCS Rundown, the Oz LOL Podcast, and of course the T-Force Proper, along with many other shows that we put out for you regularly on the network. For more information, go to patreon.com slash T-Force Network. And welcome, everybody, to the Trinity Force Podcast LCS Rundown, Episode 71. We're in Week 7 of the EU and NA LCS. And unfortunately, the LCS Rundown crew couldn't quite get it together this week. And unfortunately, we're going to have to give you another one of our hit-it-and-quit-it little recap episodes. My name is Optimus Tom. I'm going to be going over the European LCS. And a little bit later on, Amaka Norm is going to take over and bring you through Week 7 of the NA LCS. So without further ado... Let's get started with the EU LCS, where it continued to be, well, pretty much just that this past week. The anybody can be anybody mentality is kind of given way to the anybody can be anyone except Fnatic mentality. <laughs> Fnatic has grabbed the longest LCS regular season win streak with 14 wins over their closest opponents this week in h2k and origin and they're looking primed and ready for another playoff victory but the games they weren't complete stomps both h2k and origin showed why they're at the top of the table and how they deserve to be there and origin especially had an extremely strong showing against the eu lcs leader netting huge advantages until a defunct fanatic brush by origin around the dragon pit swung things back into the namesake team's favor a massive comeback showed that while Fnatic are still vulnerable, they can play from behind quite well, and that's a really scary proposition moving into a best of X series in the playoffs. Also, Fnatic with these two wins has secured themselves first place, as now they own the tiebreaker against their closest two competitors, and nobody else can actually catch them in wins with only four games remaining right now. So automatically first place, automatic buy into the semifinals there for Fnatic. H2K, on the other hand, did not bounce back so well after being handed the loss by Fnatic. They went 0-2 yet again this week with a quite surprising loss to Rockat. And Rockat themselves continue to be the team that breaks my poor Optimus Tom Hart, showing extremely great positioning and Fantastic play against H2K, especially on the part of Vander and Yankos, but losing a crucial, crucial match to Elements by playing slow and steady and into Elements' favor and directly into their hands. So for Rocket now down 0-2 in the season series against Elements, they're going to have to straight up beat the record in order to leapfrog them in the standings. But that was made a little bit easier this week since Rocket was up one game on Elements to begin with because the Unicorns of Love stepped in and and beat Elements on day number two in convincing fashion. And that kind of makes uh, Kikis' sudden announced departure from the team a little bit brighter, as the Unicorns Love did go 2-0 and zero this week, also having kind of been given a win against playing the Copenhagen Wolves. But now you've you know, got to kind of question, with Kikis leaving the team, a little bit unknown factor as to who's going to be replacing him in that time. Unicorns Love are 7-7 seven and seven right now, and they're in a prime playoff position. They're actually tied for fourth against Giants Gaming, but... Kikis was a huge playmaker and a huge innovator for that team. We're going to have to see how it affects them going into their last crucial four games of the split. But as I said, ties Unicorns Love with Giants Gaming for the fourth place position as the Spaniards plus Godfred were able to defeat a surging Gambit Gaming, or surging in the standings anyway, while dropping a match to number two Origin on day one. So pretty much an expected one-on-one week there 
for Giants. They used actually a really interesting composition against Gambit Gaming, which relied on Wurlib's surprise Galio pick in the top lane to counteract Kabishar's rise. And normally I think that's not the best idea because Galio can get his ultimate canceled out pretty easily. But they paired it with a Varus in the mid lane from Pepinero and a Jinx from Audrey for a double AD threat. So Giants put together this really great zone control kind of composition. They poked, they prodded as soon as they got one target and were able to catch them with a Galio ultimate. Jinx got the resets and they got excited and just ran all over Gambit Gaming. But Giants are going to have to prove themselves hard next week because they got some pretty tough matches. They got H2K and Rocket if they want to try to pull away from the middle of the pack in the time for playoffs. But speaking of next week, a lot of these teams fighting for fourth through sixth place are going to be looking for every win they can get at this point. And some are going to be a lot harder than others. Gamma have been looking pretty good recently, but with matches against Origin and Unicorns of Love next week, we're really going to get a chance to see if they're the real deal or if they aren't quite all together there. Besides the aforementioned match between Giants and Rocket, Rocket's going to have the daunting task of taking on Fnatic on day one when they really, really need every single win they can get, especially when Gamma's going to have a little bit of an easier uh, easier coming couple of weeks in order to uh, try to pass them in the standings and try to catch up to the Unicorns and catch up the Giants. But uh, another team that has a daunting task of the Titans of the EU LCS is Elements. They play them on day number two, but they have a much easier match on day number one than Rockat does because Elements is going to be playing the Copenhagen Wolves. So it's very, very possible that Elements may be able to catch Rockat in the standings, but Rockat is, I mean, they're going to be really hard schedule for them because technically Giants are ahead of them in the standings, and Giants is playing pretty well right now. So Rockat. They're the team that kind of plays to their opponent, and if they play wacky and don't know what they're doing against the Giants, it could be an 0-2 week for Rocket, and that could spell doom for their playoff run, especially if Elements do wind up going 1-1 or somehow wind up beating Fnatic. But as I mentioned before, Fnatic is safe in first place for this split, but things are really going to be heating up in spots 2 through 6. H2K really needs to bounce back from an 0-2 week and try to catch up to Origins, so because they wind up playing them on day one of the final EU LCS regular season week. And with enough wins, that match could just decide second place all by itself. Origin currently owns the head-to-head against H2K, 1-0 from like week one or two in the LCS split when H2K kind of hadn't woken up yet. So it's going to be very, very crucial that both of these teams win as many matches as possible. Origin, if they beat H2K, not only will they have one more win on top of them, because H2K is currently down nine and six. I'm uh, sorry, nine and seven, whereas Origin is ten and ten and four compared to nine and five. Sorry about that. But Origin have one extra win uh, than H2K. So even if H2K were to win as many games as Origin, Origin would wind up beating them. So Origin needs to win this game against them to own the head-to-head just in case they slip up on anything else. And H2K, they need to win this game because otherwise they just have to straight up be better than Origin, which means Origin is going to have to lose pretty much all their other matches while H2K wins the other three matches that they wind up having, which is not extremely likely given the fact that origin still has some of the bottom of the table teams to wind up playing against down the table giants and unicorns of love are currently tied for four it's a little bit weird to say that at seven and seven but uh if things are part of the course unicorns of love will wind up going two and two and end the series end the season at nine and nine again and then make a run in the playoffs so giants might have a little bit of breathing room but both of these teams are consistently inconsistent and the first one to really find their footing and pick up a couple wins against maybe some of the opponents you'd expect them to lose against is going to be the team that really locks up that fourth place spot uh, Gambit and Rockat are right on their heels, though, tied at 6-8 and eight in a tie for 6th place currently. And Element still has a decent shot at playoffs with a 5-9 and nine record. They are technically in 8th place, but don't forget, because teams are tied for 4th and 6th, that means that technically 3rd through 6th are all tied up at this point with each other. So that would, in theory, put Elements into a very interesting spot. But SK Gaming continues their slippery slope downwards with back-to-back disappointing performances this week and they end up with a four in ten record while the Copenhagen Wolves continue to be in last place with only two wins on top of their 12 devastating losses so guys the EU LCS anybody can beat anybody except for Fnatic can can Fnatic wind up going for the perfect season of 18 and 0 we'll have to find out because like we said they already played their two closest competitors so everybody else in theory they should be able to just wipe the floor with 
but we'll have to see. EULCS Week 8 is going to be super, super exciting. I think, honestly, the match I want to watch is Giants against H2K. It'll prove if H2K are really able to bounce back after some back-to-back losses like that, and we'll kind of speak to the mentality in a best-of-X situation, whereas Giants, they got to start beating some of these top-of-the-table teams if they want to be considered a contender going into the gauntlet, maybe even getting a shot at Worlds, which sounds a little bit weird when you think of Giants fighting for their spot, tied for the relegation spot just last split. So a lot of turnaround in EU, a lot of upset potential, and a lot of action headed that way. But that's going to be it from the EU LCS side of things. I'll pass it on over to Mock and Norm, who's going to wrap up the show with the NA LCS, a.k.a. the not-so-good LCS. In the North American region this week, we have a massive shakeup of the standings. We'll start with the now sole second place team, Liquid, who beat out TDK and TSM this week to continue their three game winning streak, improving to 10 and 4. With a loss against Liquid, TSM also suffers the same fate against Team 8. This lands them tied for third place alongside CLG and Impulse. CLG improved this week, although very slightly, with wins against TDK and Enemy, crucial for them staying competitive. Impulse also improved this week with wins over Dignitas and Team 8. Despite all of this movement, Gravity still holds the number one spot with wins over Enemy and Cloud9, improving overall to 11 and 3. Speaking of first place, let's take a look at the standings. As I just mentioned, Gravity sits currently at number one, followed closely by Liquid, who's just one game behind, solely at second. CLG, Impulse, and TSM all share third place, currently at 9 and 5, but they're followed closely by Dignitas in 6th, and then Team 8 in 7th. Bit more of a gap there. Sitting only one game down, Cloud9 and Enemy share a record of 4 and 10, with TDK still sitting on their first and only win. Taking a look at next week's matchups, Tune in for Enemy vs. Cloud9 as the two teams try to catch up to Team 8 and avoid landing in the promotional tournament. Keep in mind that even if these teams don't move out of 8th or 9th place, it still gives them preference on who they end up facing in the Challenger series, which is critically important since we have two undefeated teams, that is Coast and Renegades, in the Challenger series, meaning it may be quite a challenge for Enemy and Cloud9 to stay in the LCS. Also take a look on day one for TIP, Impulse versus TSM, and CLG versus Liquid. This is going to shake up the top spots quite a bit, as these teams are currently vying for third and second place. But keep a keen eye on Dignitas as they play Gravity see what I did there. this week, as well as TSM. They're only one game down, so don't count them out just yet. Thanks for listening to this week's quick LCS Rundown. For those of you who are expecting to hear the Challenger Rundown uh, shortly after this episode airs, we are changing up the format for that just slightly. Uh, I'm going to start recording that later on in the week and releasing that separately on the feed. So you'll see two episodes come up for the LCS Rundown each week, one being the LCS proper and the next being the Challenger Rundown. The format, for the most part, will stay the same. It'll still be a quick update. I may bring in uh, other members of the show from time to time to discuss certain topics, but for the most part, it will be the same. We're doing this so that the timing can be a little bit better with the Challenger series. Whereas tonight, as I'm recording this, this is Monday, Tuesday rather, we're having games played tonight. You're not going to get this till tomorrow. Timing's weird. Releasing later on the week, much better. So look forward to seeing that in the not-too-distant future, and thanks for listening. Catch you next week. Thanks for listening to the LCS Rundown, sponsored by the Trinity Force Podcast Network. Did did you like what we did there with the LCS in the news? Well, you can watch us live on twitch.tv slash Podcast Monday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. That's right after the T-Force proper. Our show is made better by listener feedback from viewers just like you. You can reach out to the show by sending us an email, lcs at trinityforcepodcast.com, leaving us a voicemail, 978-378-0257, or leaving us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Thanks again, and if you like what we're doing here for the LCS, be sure to check out the other shows on the network.
Network, there's the Trinity Force Podcast, the Oz LOL Podcast, Four Wards Podcast, Sheen Procs on YouTube, and more. Visit trinityforcepodcast.com to learn more. Boop.